Hello and welcome to Fun and Mental, the channel where we try to put the fun and the mental back into Christian fundamentalism. Later this week, I am going to be teaching a class on Luke chapter 6. And in that passage, Jesus is confronted by the Pharisees about uh, the Sabbath and whether or not he and his disciples were keeping it. And what I want to do with the class is after I sort of exegete the passage, I want to address some common concerns, maybe misunderstandings that different people have about the Sabbath. And so I thought I'd share some of those uh, with you. I think the big question a lot of people have is, are we under the Sabbath? Do I, as a New Testament Christian, have to keep the Sabbath? For me, the answer is quite straightforward. The answer is no, you don't. Uh, we are not required to keep the Sabbath. And how do I know this? Well, it's passages like Romans 6 and verse 14, which says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? For you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, this doesn't mean that we are without law. This doesn't mean that there is no moral force governing us. It does, however, mean that we are not under the Old Testament Mosaic law as the rule of life. Instead, we are to be governed by love for Christ. And this love for Christ will actually take us beyond the law to an internal and external submission to all that God desires, whether it's on the list or not. And this is very important, I mean, as, as, the, as the passage in Romans says, as long as we are living under the law, as long as the law itself is what governs us, sin will have dominion over us, because the law cannot save. The law cannot uh, empower you to do what is pleasing to God. And so all it can do is show you your guilt and your need for Christ, your need for regeneration, your need, as a, even as a born-again Christian, to submit to the Spirit to overcome sin and to please God. So those external ceremonial elements of the law have been replaced by a genuine love of God, by a love for Him. The Bible does not tolerate people demanding that we keep the Sabbath. Colossians 2.16 is very direct. It says, So let no one judge you in food or in drink, which I think is um, reference to the kosher laws, or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths. Paul's like, don't let people condemn you for how you keep the Sabbath or how you don't. Uh, that is not what makes us acceptable to God. So the Bible is very clear that the Old Testament law as a governing agency in our life is no longer operative. Now, the law still has value in that it shows us the character of God, but we are no longer governed by its rules. We are said governed by love for Christ, which will cause us to keep some of those rules, right? If I love Christ, I won't murder. But the reason I shouldn't murder is not because there's a rule about it, but because that would not be pleasing to God. That would be inconsistent with his character. So therefore, Christians are absolutely under no obligation to keep the Sabbath laws. Now, what about Sunday? I right, guess where some Christians will come back like, okay, the Sabbath, as the Jews understood it, is no more, but now Sunday has replaced Saturday as the Christian Sabbath. Now, it is true that the first day of the week is important in the life of a Christian. It was the day that Jesus rose from the dead. The Gospel accounts very clear on this. It's also the day, uh, because of this, that the early church met to worship. In Acts 20, in verse 7, it says, on the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul began talking to them, intending to leave the next day, and he prolonged his message until midnight. So here's one of several examples in the New Testament where Christians got together on the first day of the week to break bread, which is, I think, a reference to the Lord's Supper, and to be taught, uh, to fellowship, and to do all the things that we think of when we think of uh, church. And this happened on the first day of the week. Uh, Sunday is referred to as the Lord's Day in Revelation 1.10. But this doesn't mean that the Lord's Day is the new Sabbath. Uh, there are actually some fundamental differences between the Old Testament Jewish Sabbath and the New Testament Christian Lord's Day. I mean, the obvious one is, right, that one Saturday and one Sunday. But there's even some more fundamental differences than that. The first is uh, the Old Testament Sabbath had social implications. Israel was a nation with a civil government, and people were required 
to do and not do certain things on the Sabbath. And even people who um, were not Jews, but happened to be residing in the land of Israel on Saturday, were obliged to follow these laws. In contrast, the New Testament Lord's Day is strictly for the church. I do not expect unbelievers to keep <laughs> the Lord's Day, all right? Uh, it's for those who belong to the Lord and it's strictly for his church. Kind of keeping with that, uh, the Old Testament Sabbath was a day of rest. That was the emphasis of the Sabbath. It was where you ceased from your work and you rejuvenated. That, that's the emphasis for Saturday. The New Testament Lord's Day is a day of assembled worship. It's where you come together as a church, you fellowship together, you study the word, you sing songs, uh, you take communion, you do all those things that go into corporate Christian worship, which I love. Sunday is my favorite day of the week. But let's be honest, I'm not sure you can call it a day of rest, especially if you have kids. Right? Trying to get your kids out the door and to church and have them not destroy the building before the day's over, that will exhaust you. All right? I'm not sure you can rightly call the Lord's Day a day of rest, especially if you're a pastor. If you're a pastor, you end Sunday exhausted. And trying to count that as a day of rest, uh, to me, doesn't make a lot of sense. And I think it's because the Sabbath and the Lord's Day have different functions for different purposes. The New Testament never states that Sunday is the Christian Sabbath. So if you believe that, I think the burden is on you to prove it, because the Bible simply doesn't say it. So does all this mean that there is nothing for us to learn from the Sabbath teachings? Well, no, of course not. All Scripture is profitable, even the passages that don't have direct application. God is teaching us, through the Sabbath, something about the relationship between work and rest. And this principle actually predates the Sabbath. During the creation week, God created for six days, and then he rested. And, and he wasn't instituting the Sabbath when he did that. He was just teaching us something about the relationship between creative work and constructive rest. We also see this demonstrated in the life of Christ. As we've been doing uh, the study of Luke at my church, I've been impressed by this pattern we see in Lord Jesus of intense ministry, getting next to people, teaching people, serving people, meeting their needs, and then intense rest, intense devotional life, going off the desert and communing with his Father. He did both, and that created a sort of balance in his life. So there is wisdom in a six to one work rest ratio. But I really don't think God's particular about when we do the six parts and when we do the one. All right, I also don't think we should be fussy about exactly what that rest looks like. Maybe you're someone that likes to read a book. Maybe you're someone that going on a jog is restful. I, I really don't think God uh, cares how we do it, as long as it is pleasing to him. Now, having said all that, all right, there's another sense in which if you asked me, do you keep the Sabbath? I would say yes. And then if you asked me, would you keep it on Saturday or Sunday? I would say yes, and on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. In Christ, every day is a Sabbath day. Hebrews 4, 1 and 2 says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was preached, was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached not profit them, not being mixed with faith and them that heard it. So what the author is doing here is describing people during the Old Testament who could not enter the rest promised them because they did not believe God. In verse 4 he describes the day of rest, but then in verses 7 and 8 the author of Hebrews uses Psalm 95 verse 8 to demonstrate that the literal Sabbath could not be the rest that God promised because there was a prophecy of another day of rest coming. He then concludes his argument in verses 9 and 10. He says, Therefore, uh, there remains a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his works, his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So by faith, when we enter into Christ, we can therefore cease 
from our own works. This doesn't mean we stop doing good things. It means we are no longer doing labors to impress God, to earn our salvation, to make God love us and happy with us. Because of what Christ did for us, we can simply rest in his work and cease from our own self-righteousness. So the person who keeps the Sabbath as a way of gaining merit with God does not take the Sabbath too seriously. He doesn't take it seriously enough. Instead of keeping the Sabbath one day a week, we should keep it every day by resting in Jesus' cross work. The purpose of the Sabbath is not the Sabbath itself. It's designed to point us to the Lord of the Sabbath. The ultimate way to remember the Sabbath is to stop trying to earn your own salvation and to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. If that's a message you appreciate, then I would encourage you to help make videos like this possible. Please subscribe to the channel, please push like, comment below. Unless you disagree with me, then you can keep your opinions to yourself. Just kidding, you're, you're allowed to comment. Uh, but I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this video. And I trust it's been a blessing to you. And I hope that you truly do remember the Sabbath by resting in what Jesus has done for you.